Uh, so my name's uh, Dr. Andrew Groves. Uh, I am a senior lecturer at uh, Flinders University here in the beautiful uh, Adelaide in South Australia, which is the uh, land of the Ghana people. Uh, in terms of uh, my background, uh, I've been uh, researching for, I guess, more than 15 years, really, in, in various roles uh, and settings. And that ranges right through from, uh, you know, obviously higher ed and, and academia through uh, to government and also some various uh, consultancies with local uh, stakeholders, both here in South Australia, uh, but also uh, in Victoria uh, at my former institution, uh, Deakin. Um, so, yeah, a, a fantastic environment to do research uh, and really passionate about um, South Australia and in particular looking at uh, alcohol and other drug issues in, in this space. Uh, so in terms of uh, what I'm what I do uh, of an evening and on the weekends, um, in terms of. Uh, the, the standard streaming services. I've been watching a few different things. Currently watching Outlander uh, with my wife, which is, uh, I guess, a little bit more on the drama side than I'm used to, but some really interesting um, tropes in regards to uh, consent um, and, um, uh, I guess, admittedly drawing from sort of historical reference, but nonetheless, uh, sovereignty uh, and issues of, um, of conflict and so on. So a little bit of fun, but also a little bit of work uh, built into that. Um, but also a few other shows like Ozark, The Wire, which I guess are a little bit more um, uh, criminology based. So uh, crime, drama, crime drama is probably a bit of a niche for me. And I guess in some ways you can argue that it is uh, work. So, you know, doing work time, sitting on the couch in your PJs uh, is, uh, is where I'm going with that. One of the things that I'm uh, also uh, or just recently watched, which I think is really interesting in the rural criminology space, is actually uh, the Aussie uh, crime um, drama um, the the dry that has uh, Eric Banner and a, a great Australian cast. Um, obviously, it's a, a bit of a, a whodunit, um, so it has its own level of interest in that space. But also, what I found really interesting, and I guess in some ways a bit confronting, were some of the uh, you know the rural challenges and realities of what it means to live in rural Australia. Um, so it was based in. I think rural uh, Victoria or New South Wales. Uh, no, I think it was in the Wimmera actually, uh, in rural Victoria. Um, fantastic film, obviously, um, you know, some Hollywood elements to it, but also uh, a really a great snapshot uh, and showcase of, of Australia and some of the challenges that rural communities face, um, not just in terms of, um, you know, of crime. So in terms of rural criminology, I think it's, uh, and this is something that I'm sure many of our um, sort of disciplined colleagues uh, will talk about, is a real passion for rural criminology because, and there's, there's many reasons for that. Uh, it's a largely unexplored field. So I think there's that enduring challenge of, of um, building knowledge um, and learning what it means to be rural in a space that arguably hasn't had a lot of uh, academic or uh, you know, research intervention uh, for a long period of time. I think also, particularly in Australia, one of the, the key elements or key reasons uh, for why I'm so uh, interested in rural criminology is that it's, it is quintessentially Australian. I mean, if you, if you talk to people around the world about what it means to be an Australian, often they'll get that image of you know, the kangaroo you know, bounding down the main street, which obviously there are some elements of myth to that. But I think being Australian and being a proud Australian is understanding and appreciating that we are so tied uh, to that land and uh, in some ways also drum, uh, drawing from uh, our wonderful uh, uh, history, uh, and our Indigenous history as well, and that, that connection with land is really important. And so I think what uh, rural criminology allows us to do, regardless of the, you know, the subfield, whether it's victims or alcohol and other drugs or policing uh, and so on, I think it offers an opportunity to uh, help people um, and to give voices or a voice to communities um, and really engage in meaningful research with these communities uh, and helping these communities, which is something that is not only beneficial for obviously Australian rural criminology, but I think it's also really generalizable and scalable uh, around the world because there are obviously similarities in terms of um, you know, rural and regional areas around the world. And so I think that that helping communities and really involving communities in that space is a really fantastic feature of rural criminology. And, and you'll see that hopefully in, uh, in my work, but also one of the things that I'd like to, to point out in uh, our wonderful colleagues' work as well. Uh, in terms of uh, that space uh, in, and my current uh, research projects, uh, predominantly, I do look at methamphetamines, but also uh, alcohol and other drugs uh, in rural communities. Uh, 
typically, or at least more recently, have been looking at South Australia and Victoria uh, for obvious reasons, having worked in, in both of those spaces. But I think there's also a real uh, focus in both South Australia and, and Victoria around particular uh, drugs and perceptions of those drugs, such as methamphetamines, given the, the most recent uh, ICE task force and so on. Um, a lot of that work uh, is focusing on uh, different elements of those fields. So for instance, uh, so primarily I'm a, an AOD scholar, so alcohol and other drug scholar, uh, looking at pill testing, uh, perceptions and attitudes towards uh, use uh, among community members, including both um, those who use drugs and those who don't, uh, talking about uh, other uh, broader issues around access to services and support and counselling and so on, which I think are all really uh, obviously really worthwhile in their own right, but I think one of the key features or one of the reasons why I'm um, interested in rural criminology is that it allows us to uh, tackle a, um, you know, one issue from multiple angles. And all of those elements kind of lead to a broader conversation and a really important conversation about drug policy in Australia and indeed you know, internationally. And I think for anyone that's had a look at the national drug strategy, uh, it's based on harm reduction. And so I, I consider myself a harm reduction scholar. And so I think it's a really important space to be working in. But I think there's some really fantastic uh, research that needs to be done uh, to, I guess, challenge some of the, the principles that are in that document. And indeed how we respond to um, people who uh, engage in alcohol and other drug use, as well as the communities they um, sit in um, to, to really focus on that harm reduction uh, approach. Uh, and in, in terms of projects, um, I've actually been working with a number of uh, PhD students uh, on a number of really fantastic uh, projects, looking at uh, media representations around pill testing, uh, looking at uh, bringing in um, uh, interdisciplinary focuses on um, uh, bringing philosophy and criminology together to, to look at pragmatism and seeing how that uh, can change the, the discourse that we engage in, uh, in here in Australia around drugs uh, and so on and so forth. So there's you know, a lot of opportunities there to, um, as I say, target different elements of a, a much broader conversation, which I think the Australian community um, needs to have. What, a, what an opportunity it would be to, I guess, get stuck into, you know, an area of, of real interest. And I think the, in terms of a, a problem and a solution that I see um, that is significant with regard to rural criminology, in some ways, uh, I think it's an issue of both policy and practice. Um, obviously, as, a, as I mentioned, I'm a, a harm reduction scholar and, uh, you know, really driven by a desire to minimise the harms and burdens associated with alcohol and drug use, uh, including uh, evaluation of how the law and various policies actually contribute to those harms. And so it's a, a really, I guess, um, uh, realistic and, and pragmatic approach to this issue, not just looking at it from the traditional lens of, uh, you know, policing is good and drug users are bad. I think we need to really break away from some of those binaries. And so looking into things like community attitudes and support, uh, understanding what, you um, you know, harm reduction means looking at uh, various services within the community that we can you know, use to, to build a more grounded, uh, holistic approach is something that uh, I think is really needed in regards to uh, rural criminology. And the, the benefit there is, um, or one of the, the features I think that uh, is really important in this space is that it's not just about the individuals on the ground, whether they be, you know, individuals who use drugs or those who don't, but are in contexts that uh, where drug use might occur, such as um, you know, music festivals and so on and so forth. There are both individual and you know, community benefits to looking at this issue um, uh, more holistically, uh, because I think one of the, the challenges uh, with rural criminology, and so uh, you can see how in some ways I'm talking about a, an AOD or alcohol and other drug issue, you know, why does this matter in terms of rural criminology? The key there and why I'm kind of pairing these two things together is that in terms of how we understand uh, alcohol and other drugs in rural and regional spaces here in Australia and indeed globally, we need more empirical research and knowledge about the use of these substances in these spaces because what much of what we know in criminology is actually drawn from urban studies or from uh, you know, misconceptions or misperceptions through media as well as uh, you know, I guess the legacy of a, a more punitive traditional focus on law enforcement. And so really it's about building knowledge in this space, but also building knowledge that will benefit the community and um, in, in rural and regional settings. But it can also feed back that information to um, you know, urban centres in Australia. We know that in Australia, much of our population is you know, tucked onto the coast and in, in uh, very urban environments. And so it's 
to my mind, it's twofold. It's about building knowledge of what we can actually do to support these rural communities. It's about the word community, um, but also building um, you know, a direct link to policy that uh, builds effective uh, criminological you know, evidence-based uh, policy uh, to reduce the harms associated in these spaces, because it's not just uh, a rural issue. It's certainly not just an urban issue. I think it's certainly something that we need to look at uh, holistically uh, if we're gonna make any progress um, in this space. Uh, and in terms of um, uh, in, in terms of how to do that, I think there's a, a couple of really important things that are needed. So, in regards to a magic wand, if we uh, could you know if we could find one of those, funding is a really important place to start. I know that's perhaps a little you know cliche, and it's it's probably an issue when it comes to most issues uh, that governments and, and communities face. But funding in this space is really important because, as we know, it's not just about um, you know, research is not just about alcohol and drugs, for example, when we talk about issues with funding, I think rural and regional, re, sorry, rural and regional areas typically face issues with access to services, um, um, access to education, uh, and, and so on and so forth, all of which draw from that issue with regards to funding. I think also what's important in this space is a, a real, a, the need for a real shift in thinking. Uh, it's about to my mind, um, and indeed some of uh, the scholarship in this space uh, speaks to this, is shifting or integrating the principles of public harm and public health in regards to uh, criminology. So it's not just talking about crime and, and the criminal law in how we frame these issues of, of alcohol and other drugs, or indeed any of the other issues that plague um, rural and regional areas, but it's about looking at it from a, a public health perspective um, and building criminological research and discourse to accept that model. Uh, and that's something that has been done in other countries in, with specifically related to drugs, such as uh, you know, Portugal, for example, uh, has um, embedded public health principles and thinking into their, um, uh, into their policy and, and legislation around this issue. And so it's something that we can, you know, there are examples of and we can draw from, I think, to really focus on building a, a whole of community um, bottom-up approach. I think that's um, really important when it comes to rural criminology, given that, often uh, a lot of rural voices are left unheard because of that friction of distance, because of that lack of access. Um, and uh, as I said, because of that, I guess, concentration of, uh, of governmental power in, you know, in, in cities and particularly the Eastern seaboard, I think it's about understanding who we are as a country. And as, as we know, Australia is a very, very large um, place. And so I think it's about um, our responsibility to, to open that up and, and hear the voices uh, from each of the different uh, elements and perspectives along the way. So whether that's, uh, you know, local uh, farm owners, uh, uh, people who work in uh, the music industry, whether it's um, people who provide public health services um, uh, in rural areas, uh, it's about those who transit from, you know, one side of the country to the other, who might be engaged in uh, providing support at music festivals, for example, all of those voices, including, um, you know, police and politicians and some of the more traditional voices, that's really important to get them all sitting uh, at the same table. So I think in terms of the magic wand, if we could get all of those voices um, in that same space in a meaningful way, because that's one of the challenges. I know that it's not new to suggest, um, you know, getting everyone at the table to have a conversation, but we know that there are power dynamics um, within those um, relationships. And so often, as has been the case in Australia, we tend to um, um, preference, or at least it has been dominated by uh, a focus on law enforcement uh, and, you know, more punitive uh, governmental intervention, whereas I think we need um, to engage a more interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach. And certainly as a criminologist and as a harm reduction scholar, I feel like it's my responsibility to allow that or to facilitate that um, engagement because uh, it's not necessarily going to happen by itself. And so I think there's a real opportunity there to, to bring those voices to the table um, and to use what we know about uh, criminology and, and indeed many of the other disciplines um, are in academia to, to build a foundation for genuine, uh, meaningful and pragmatic discourse and conversation uh, about this and indeed many other issues uh, in rural criminology. And, and just to kind of go back to one of my earlier comments about uh, one of my PhD students is doing some fantastic work in uh, bringing philosophy and, uh, and criminology together to actually you know, draw from the, the positives uh, from both of those disciplines to hopefully uh, open up an opportunity for that conversation, which I think will be really interesting in the pill testing space. Uh, 
but it's also going to have fantastic um, implications uh, for drug policy generally uh, and indeed many other topics uh, in criminology because I think um, it, it's a foundation of uh, you know, really assessing what um, uh, you know, problems are and how we can provide solutions to those. And so if I had a magic wand, I'd be saying put more focus and attention on that kind of research um, because, yes, it has benefit for my own uh, you know, discipline and field, but I think it has far wider reaching implications uh, for criminology and the community generally.